Uh, thank you, Aiden, for that, that introduction. Um, so everybody, my name is uh, TJ. Um, you can call me TJ Johnson. You can call me Wordplay TJ, whatever you'd like. Um, I'm an independent artist. Um, I'm a hip hop artist and producer, originally from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, the pronouns I use are, are he, him. And for the last 15 years, I've been an independent musician, just working and making my way through um, the music industry and navigating what it looks like to be an independent musician um, in, um, in the industry. So my first foray into, um, into making music and public notoriety was my song Breakfast and Biggie. So my song Breakfast and Biggie was the first single that I ever produced and it made it onto MTV's Rap Fix Live. And for those that don't know what MTV's Rap Fix Live is, we use, we've used some, some references today. <laughs> American Idol um, and, uh, and a, few other, a few other things. But Rap Fix Live was like a short-lived uh, afternoon, Wednesday afternoon show where Sway, um, Sway Calloway, the host and, and, and longtime uh, radio MC and MTV v VJ, would interview people in the industry. And it just so happened that um, my music got selected to be played on this, on, this, uh, on, this, on this episode. And I, I, it launched my career. It started what I was going to do as an independent musician. And it was an opportunity of a lifetime. And so I decided to, to seize on that and take advantage of it. So before, I kind of get into more of what's going on. I think about the energy in a room. Um, I think about wanting to know who's in the space. So I'm assuming that everybody in this room are musicians, right? How many folks are independent musicians and, and, and artists? I'm sorry? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Art, so there are quite a few artists in the, in the room. How many folks are primarily producers, instrumentalists, in bands? Okay. And who am I missing? Like, what are some other roles that pop up in, in this room? Um, I love writing for other people. Okay. Um, composition or lyrics? Both. Both. Okay, so lyrics and composition, very good. Uh, any other roles in here? Folks that like do sound engineering primarily or um, other types of roles like miking up um, yeah, I mean, audio equipment? Yeah. Parents band. Yeah, so. okay. So. Yeah, so some folks that are behind the scenes. Any DJs? What? You're, you're behind the scenes too? Yeah, sound Okay, great. Any DJs? Okay, great. Well, we have the, a wide reaching gambit of individuals who make music in here. And so, so one thing I think about is when we're wanting to perform and engage with other people, we want to like vibe out in the room. And so I wanna try something with you if you're okay with it. So <laughs> I wanna give you as much energy as you can possibly handle and I want some of that energy back. So this is a conversation. This is not me just talking at you for whatever, however many minutes that I'm up here. And so what I wanna do is use another dated reference from A Tribe Called Quest <laughs> and, see if, and see if I can get you energized. So those that know it, it goes, can I kick it? And, yes, you can. And that is the response. What is your name? Andrew. Andrew. So Andrew, you have, you have the, the right idea. And so what I want to do is try, try that for a few times and see if we can you know, kind of exchange energy in this, in this place. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. There we go. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. Very good. Give yourselves a round of applause. So... Uh, throughout this conversation, if you're brave enough to answer a question, um, I just ask that you introduce yourself before, um, before you answer that question. So I know, you know Andrew, Aiden, I'm really bad with names. 
I'm a school teacher, by the way, so <laughs> being bad with names is not really great, but I'm great with faces. And so faces, once I put them to a name, I usually got them. Are we okay footage wise? Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not, I'm in the camera most of the time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and is it okay for me to put this on YouTube? I won't have your faces up there, but your voices may be, okay? All right. Um, so my journey from making music, and uh, when I think about my journey, I think about some of the hardest parts of that, of that journey. So when I decided to make independent music, that was a choice that comes with understanding that you may not have the funding, you may not have the support, and you may not have the talent right away to make it into uh, uh, connecting with audiences in the best way that you possibly can. But I, what I did think about and what I did um, consider is that will I be successful enough to pay my bills, to continue to make music, and to reach new people and new audiences on a regular basis? If I had enough to do that, then that was what success meant to me. So for you all that make music, kind of, I'm curious, what does success sound like for you? What do you think? Being a good craftsman. Being a good craftsman, very good. Writing things that people can relate to, that you also relate to. Ooh, so tapping into those uh, other people's emotions and putting that into work. So very, very nice. Andrew again. Reaching people and moving people, okay? Being able to stop and while you're making it, like being satisfied with what you make. Yeah, stop, be satisfied with what you make. What's your name? Mika. Mika, nice to meet you. And what's your name? My name's Hayden. Hayden. Um, for me, it's being able to make something you're proud of. Yeah. Make money off it, hopefully. Yeah, make something you're proud of and hopefully make, me, make money. But if it doesn't, are you okay with that? Yeah. That's the thing that I had to be okay with. I had to be okay with whether I made a dime or whether I didn't, I continued to pursue music as, as an endeavor. I didn't let the lack of having funds or the lack of revenue from, from my music deter me from continuing to create. It's a lifelong pursuit and it's a dedicated journey. And so, uh, I, I talked about what success means to me. Success also means to me that I'm gonna do this until I make it to the grave. As, as dark as that sounds, I'm gonna do this for life. And that means if I'm rapping on, on my deathbed and I have to spit a few bars, I'm gonna call him up and, <laughs> we're, and, and, we're, gonna, and we're gonna make it happen. And so when thinking about that, um, I think, let me see. I think about four rules to making it in the music business. And as I go through these four rules, I'm gonna to try to split my screen really quick because I wanna be able to see my notes, but also do this. Cerny asked me to do this like today. <laughs> so I wanted, to, I, I wanted to make that happen. So the first rule is to be unfazed and unbothered. So my fingers are in my ears because, not because I don't want to be good at my craft, not because I don't want to make good stuff. It's because I can't listen to all the noise while I'm trying to make it. I also can't listen to the noise while I'm trying to put it out. Because what does that do to you emotionally? Blocks you. Anybody read the comment sections ever? On <laughs> it's a good idea not to. <laughs> um, but when you do and you get that negative comment, how does that feel? Horrible. Horrible. How else does it feel? Uninspiring. Uninspiring. Anything else? Discouraging. Discouraging. So why would you want to put any of that energy back into your music, right? You don't want people to lie to you, but you do want to be uh, uplifted. And so... What I know about independent music is that 20, uh, sorry, 80% of my revenue 
is going to come from 20% of my fan base. So those folks that truly care sign up to my email list, buy an album from Bandcamp, um, stream me on a regular basis without me asking them to do so, and uh, push my music to other people. Those are the 20% of my audience. Everybody else, are, they're, they're passive listeners. They're not necessarily going to continue to listen to me, but I still want to make music for all of those folks. The next rule is to share your stuff consistently. And so over the past 15 years, I've made nine albums independently. I've put out more than 150 different songs um, and, and, and assets that I, that I have. Why do you think like, this consistency is important? What do you think, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, you need to like keep working that muscle and, and, and work out. If you, if you don't work out, you don't walk around and move your body, you're gonna like end up hurting yourself. Uh, I'm Shay, by the way. Shay, okay. Um, and you never know when anyone's gonna find it. Yeah. So you might as well have background. Yeah, you never know when every, anybody's gonna discover your music. Um, there's a Shab I can't remember this artist's name. He's a newer artist that I've heard of called Shabui or, or something like that. Is that the right? Yeah, something like that. Shabuzi. So he, so he put out a song, I think it was like five or six years ago. And now in 2024, it's, it's on the, the Billboard charts. So you never know when these assets these things that you hold, these things that you've created, are going to blow up and make you successful. The next thing is invest in yourself. Does anybody know who this guy is? Who knows this person? Anybody heard of um, Outcast? Yeah. Do you know the song, uh, The Whole World by Outkast? So he's on the last verse of that song. Um, anybody know um, Run the Jewels? That group, right? So he's co-partner in, in Run the Jewels. He's the, he's the rapper. The other person's a rapper and a producer. Um, but this is Killer Mike, Michael Render is his name, he's from Atlanta, and he's been around in the music industry since Outkast came out in the 90s. So in the 2000s, he, got, he jumped on the whole world, and that was his first Grammy win. And since then, he's been making music independently, whether it be with Run, Run the Jewels or independent music by himself, and has just recently won three Grammys last year for his uh, self-titled album, Michael. So the one thing that inspires me about Killer Mike is that, you know, people are not necessarily going to believe in your talent, but you have to be able to invest in yourself. And not just for one year, but for multiple years. He's been doing this for, since I was a child. So for over 20 years, he's been working in the music industry, and he finally has those Grammys of his own. And the last thing is don't forget, don't be afraid to pivot. So, anybody know who this guy is? It's his guy, this guy's favorite rapper. <laughs> but uh, his name is Joe Budden. Um, he, he's also currently an in, uh, independent artist, but he's retired. Um, he was signed to Def Jam in the 2000s. Um, he's controversial, he's loud, he's boisterous, he's often in in a lot of trouble for the things that he says, especially as an MC. But he's a great rapper, and he's a part of um, the, the former group called Slaughterhouse that was signed to Shady Records. Instead of continuing to like bump his head against the wall in, in the music business, he pivoted and created a podcast. So 
myself and Icarus Gray, this is one of my, my co-hosts on our podcast, he, uh, we do a podcast called No Rhyme or Reason. And instead of being stagnant in the music business, we pivoted. Because we know that today, uh, musicians not only have to be musicians, we have to be content creators. We have to put ourselves out there, out there on Instagram, on Snapchat, on, uh, on YouTube, on every other platform that exists out there. And we can't, be, we can't keep ourselves hidden behind the scenes. And when I wake up, take me home now. Uh. Every day I'm staring at the phone now. Yeah. Okay. Three months gone, hanging on messages. And only adults know what the...